So we taught him mixed him with the two for bricks and the red bricks alternating going up. And then this is opus and clear to you. So first we did that, and then we were looking at the mortar, and we followed the mortar to see how far it goes up. So you can see this mortar is all the same around these blocks. But then, as you go higher up, you get to a certain level, it starts to change, and this is sand here, and then down here, and the color changes. Yeah, the little infusions, and it starts changing. So you know that this is a different mortar from this, is there any, is there any way to tell whether something is actually being built at a separate time or whether it's being repaired at a separate time? Like whether there were those, those earth, the earthquake that took place? Usually if you find um, pointing, which you can see here, mm -hmm. uh, you can tell that it's being If you find a mortar, and it's ancient mortar, then you know that was built earlier. Like we had a wall around the corner that we thought was a whole bunch of, um, we thought it was an ancient layer and then another ancient and then a modern layer, if that made sense. But they all used ancient mortar, so it turned out there was just a whole bunch of ancient reconstructions instead of modern reconstructions. So you can tell that the chunks. Uh, the top here is an ancient reconstruction. Uh, this is the but the rest of this is survived after that point? The, um, mostly, if I remember correctly, yeah. we had all of this being ancient. Oh, which yeah. one? Do you do actual chemical analysis of mortars, or is it more just what it feels like yeah. and what it looks like? I don't do chemical analysis. I don't know if you have Does people anybody? who do that. We don't do it. There are people who do. I, I know some of them who have done it. It's very useful, but it doesn't. It, it sometimes actually just makes more distinctions than are within groups that it actually Obvious. visually yeah. can, can help to do. Um, the other thing, Ian, I wanted to show you is we talked about this the database right. here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we have is a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of check boxes. We have fill-in information, and then so we have whatever kind of work it is. So this would be opus and kirtum. This over here, as I mentioned, would be opus mixtum, uh, opus vitatum mixtum, the vitatum being this, the mixtum being when the pieces come together. Uh, and then we have also categories here to talk about how hard the mortar is, whether what, what color it is, uh, the shades, and what kind of bonding might happen, including some of the inclusions. Uh, and then if there's a wall covering, like there had been a plaster, either an ancient plaster, or uh, as Julia just said, modern pointing that is put in between the stones mm -hmm. to try to consolidate and keep it from falling apart that goes in there. But I thought you'd like this because it, it, this, the, the design of this was done by our, our database guy. Um, but the, um, the kind of impetus for a lot of it came from working at Cardinal, right? So being able to get people like Julia to the field, get her the training that she needs, get her um, get the, her high abilities in, in high gear, uh, and, to, and to marshal the, these people together in the field giving this workflow, and then to carefully put that into a data flow, right? But then, at the end of the day, it gives us the data that we need, and gives them the data that they need for this, to do work on the next day. The next team member can work off of this. So, I think you'll probably remember putting something like this together at some point. What is this thing? Uh, this uh, is a, 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 one of the best database programs for iPad. This is FileMaker Pro. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a straight client to FileMaker. And it, it works great. But we do our drawing in iDraw, and so that's a vector-based uh, drawing program. Draw with the top of it, um, and with a, so we take a photograph of this wall with a meter stick, and that means we don't need to put any scale into our drawing. We can just draw over it, and when we're ready, scale it down from the meter stick. Uh, we also do some graphical representation um, um, of walls. Uh, let's see if Josh has any on here. Josh, do you have any? Uh, I think that's oh, Julia's. So uh, you can see it here, Ian, that, that basically what we've done is. As I said before to you guys, a, a, a Paris matrix is a graphical representation that doesn't actually 
represent the space of things, but rather their position. So here, the yellow is all the ancient, right? And so here we have one construction of ancient. Above that is another ancient construction, but a different one. So a, 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 a ancient reconstruction. And then above that is a whole series of modern uh, constructions. So you can see all those numbers and how they relate to each other. As you move, you move roughly through time here. But the, the width of these have nothing to do with the length of time. They really have just to say the position of where these two things are. So you can get a quick snapshot of what we're looking at in a wall like this. So one of our end products is uh, a series of database entries. Another one of our end products is a wall drawing. And yet another one is, uh, is a graphical representation like this. So have you had an opportunity to do anything like this before? Never. Never? This is my first time. <laughs> and so you're starting with this. You're never going to know it not without that. That's, that's, that's yeah. Uh, I'm going to be spoiled from this point out. Good. That's what we want. We want you not to be spoiled. We want you to be an expert. So in the next place you work outside of Pompeii, they'll go, and that's Julia. She knows what she's doing. You know, I'm, I'm just in terms of building, one of the things I wonder about is in uh, regularly in modern building, you would get a huge truckload of your sand or whatever that then you were going to mix up. I wonder whether they, you know, since it was probably hand carried, whether there's a possibility that as they go through the work, you know, they go, oh, Claudio's raised his prices. Let's now get our sand from Flavius. Yep. He, he's cheaper. And so you would have a distinct change in the sand, but it was merely because Claudio raised his prices. <laughs> you know, I mean. We were actually not thinking something like that. Yeah, we should show them that. <laughs> Sure, we'll come and take a look. Um, and and it, we get that pretty regularly. Sometimes it's even, sometimes it's even just that they, the, the bucket of mortar they're mixing will be slightly different than the yeah. pile of stuff. You know, like one time you get a full shovel, the next time you get a half shovel, right? And then you're throwing this into the mortar, you get change. You get some. You get some changes. But that's why when we were talking about this before, that's why it's so. You have to take all these things into consideration. How hard is the mortar? Is it harder here or softer there? What color is it? Is it the same color or different color? How about the inclusions? Are they different? So if you have one of those things changing and the other two are the same and the construction style is the same and they're physically connected, you start to say, that's just a, 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 a small anomaly within this one form of construction. It's not a reason to think there's a massive change. Okay, yeah. you, you, could, you can say that, stratigraphically speaking, every single one of these rocks and every slab of, of masonry put on there is, in fact, a different event. Yeah. But that doesn't really tell us anything about right. the world. Right. 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 Thanks, Josh.